thank you. Conditions from South Alabama to Louisiana are changing by the second. Let's get back to our team of meteorologists. Jerry, where's Ida right now? Just northeast of Homo, Louisiana, Jeff, at this moment in time. You see it right there. And we were talking about this a few minutes ago. The storm's been over land since I believe it was 5 of noon when it made landfall. And take a look at this. The eye is still very, very easy to discern, still well intact, as a matter of fact. This is so unusual for a storm that's been over land for that long. But we have to realize that this part of Louisiana, number one, is flat. Number two is very swampy and it's very tropical, so humidities are high, dew points are high, and that tends to support a tropical system like this one, and it's one of the reasons it's holding together so well. Still a Category 4 hurricane at this late hour. Here's a close-up view of the radar, and finally the eye is starting to collapse. There it is, just northeast of Homa, where, from what I understand, a lot of rooftops have been blown off, a lot of damage been done. We'll hear more about that as time goes on. But it's beginning to make that turn now. It had been moving northwest, now more like due northerly, and eventually it's going to turn northeastward. And, of course, that means we will be dealing with the storm over the next couple of days. It is going to stay west of New Orleans. Could possibly, the eastern part of the eye wall could possibly impact the west part of Lake Pontchartrain. Don't know if that will happen or not, but it will be a close call. Here's the forecast track. Hasn't changed a great deal in days. Once again, Hurricane Center doing a great job with this. Moving northward for now, it will turn northeastward. It'll come very close to Tupelo, Mississippi, very close to the Shoals area. The problem is we're on the dirty side the entire time, and that means the potential for spin-up tornadoes. And that will become the main threat here, along with torrential rains in places over the next few days. And what we have to watch, what Adrian, Stephanie, Harmony, and I will be watching will be these rain bands right in through here. The first ones are kind of weak, so we're not too concerned about them becoming tornadic. But any of these tomorrow, especially if we get even just a few minutes of sunshine, if the clouds break up just a little bit, will make it more unstable and they will send off the possibility of spin up tornadoes. They'll be brief, fleeting, but they can be reasonably powerful and they can do some damage. That'll become the big thing. I imagine we'll be under a tornado watch tomorrow at some point. And at some point, we may be dealing with tornado warnings, especially from noon tomorrow till noon on Tuesday. Adrian. Yeah, Jerry, we're already seeing those outer bands affect our coastal communities. You can see them coming up from the Gulf. Uh, a lot of heavy rain across portions of coastal Alabama this evening. Meanwhile, we saw one of those outermost bands affect us a little while ago in Birmingham, points down to the south. It was a quick hitting one. It poured for about 15, 20 minutes. Winds got gusty for a short amount of time. That's now weakened the heaviest of the rain now north of central Alabama. Some leftover light to moderate rain out there right now. I do suspect that through the evening hours, things will be pretty quiet here and through the early overnight hours, same kind of thing. However, that potential for severe weather does start back up as we get closer to daybreak tomorrow. The potential for some tropical tornadoes will be tracking that. The possibility of some locally heavy rainfall, especially west of I-65. Two to five inches of rain looks most likely for areas west of I-65. Rainfall amounts drop off as you travel farther east across the state and especially across western portions of the state as well. Winds could gust 30 to 45 miles an hour, maybe a few locally higher gusts than that. Some minor tree damage certainly possible just because the grounds will be saturated from all the heavy rain coming our way. Here's a look at the expected rainfall totals. You can see across far western portions of the state that three to five inch bullseye showing up near Lamar, Marion, back into Pickens counties, and then the rainfall amounts do drop off as you travel farther off to the east. Birmingham has been fluctuating between that one to three inch rainfall total. We'll see how that plays out over the next couple of days. And then again, lightest amounts across eastern portions of the state. We're going to watch closely that potential for severe weather. Mainly we're talking about brief spin up tornadoes. It could happen at any point starting early tomorrow morning through tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night into Tuesday morning and Tuesday afternoon. So this is a long duration event that we'll be watching that potential for a few spin up tornadoes, depending on how things play out. Maybe maximize just a little bit across our far southwestern counties, Green and Hale counties specifically. Here's a look at one of our forecast models indicating that Ida will push inland overnight tonight through tomorrow morning. You start to see those outermost bands coming up from the south around 3, 4, 5 a.m. tomorrow, continuing up to the north as we go through the day. By lunchtime, the shield of heavier rain beginning to move into the Birmingham metro, affecting East Alabama beyond that time. And it's going to be in these outer bands again that we have that potential to see a few of those brief spin-up tornadoes tomorrow, tomorrow night, and into 
our day on Tuesday as well. So two alert days tomorrow and again Tuesday that will be dealing with the effects of Ida. Tropical showers, downpours, locally heavy rain, especially areas west of I-65 could be dealing with some flooding. Also the potential for gusty winds and the severe weather, that tornado potential. On Wednesday, it's the transition day. Still some scattered showers out there early on in the day. Temperatures in the middle 80s, then we dry out and we drop the humidity values. It's actually going to feel incredibly nice. A treat to look forward to for the end of the week. Lower humidity. It's going to be an early taste of fall Thursday, Friday into next weekend. Nighttime lows getting down into the 60s. Jeff. All right, that'll be worth the wait.